Hello, I'm Adrian and it's Smith's tutorial day. This comes around about once a year, I think. And I've decided to look at what difference does it make. This song has been quite hotly requested by various people. And I think this is arguably one of Johnny Marr's greatest riffs and greatest songs. So what I've done is I've revisited it this week and really taken it apart. I've known this song for years, I've played it for years, but I think I was probably getting a few things wrong. So I've tried to fix that. And in this video, I'm going to take you through it in some detail. But before I do that, let me just have a quick playthrough. <laughs> So there we go, it was actually all I could do to stop myself singing along and giving you a bit of my Morrissey impression, which is amazing, by the way. So with this song, like many Smith songs, there's a lot going on. We've got lots of layers of guitar, lots of overdub. So I'm gonna to attempt to get to the bottom of what's happening here. We've got one main electric guitar part, then we've got some acoustic parts. Towards the end of the song, we've got some overdubs and some harmonies happening. So I'm gonna try and take you through all of those things. Let's take a look. Now, before we get stuck into this properly, I just want to talk about tuning and whether or not to use a capo on this one. Now, I think it's extremely likely on the original recording that Johnny Marr tuned his whole guitar up a tone or a whole step. So the strings were actually F sharp, B, E, A, C sharp and F sharp. And you can tell that he's doing this from some of the Smith's live footage. And I think he did this on quite a number of other Smith songs. Certainly, I think it's the same in This Charming Man. And the reasons he did this, I'm not actually sure. I've never heard him talk about this in an interview. So maybe he did it just because he wanted a bit of extra chime and jangle. Maybe it was because it put the songs into a better key for Morris's voice. But I'd be interested if, if anyone's got more info in that to find out exactly what were the reasons. So with this song, you've got the option of tuning up all your strings, a tone, and it's an interesting experiment. It certainly changes the way the guitar sounds and responds. Uh, is a bit of a pain to do it. You, you might be breaking strings or worse if you're doing that. So I've actually gone for the easy option in this video and I'm using a capo at the second fret. And that's actually what I've seen Johnny Marr himself doing when he plays some of those old Smith songs. He would have played them in the past with this whole step up tuning. He does them these days with a capo and you can understand why. It's just an easier option than tuning your whole guitar up and then you, you run into hassles with breaking strings or you know, if you want to do it properly, you probably have to get your guitar set up specifically for that tuning. So uh, this is the way I recommend you doing it. And in terms of the actual guitar parts that I'm gonna show you, it's gonna be exactly the same way that Johnny Marr did it. It just means that in terms of the fret numbers, we're gonna be playing things two frets higher than he would have done on the original recording. Okay, kicking off with the main riff. <laughs> Really, we're in the key of A for this song if you ignore the capo, and the verse section of the song is based around three chords. It's really A, C, and D, and we'll come to those when we talk about the acoustic guitar part in just a moment, but I'm gonna take you through this main riff, and this is based around to start with an A shape or an A power chord shape. So I've got the open fifth string, and then I'm holding down the second fret on the fourth and third strings. I like to do this with my first finger flattened down across those two notes. And then we're just going to lift up that first finger to allow the open third string to come through at certain points during the riff. And the trickiest thing about this opening riff, I think, is the picking hand. That's really what makes it. And the, the picking pattern that we're using in this first section of the riff goes like this. So 
So if I just give you the string numbers here for the for the picking hand, we're starting on the fifth string, and it's five, three, five, four, five, three, and then five, three, five, three, five, four, five, three. happening is you're lifting up that first finger and allowing the third string to ring open on beat four so it's one two three four one two three four and for me that's the way to do it most smoothly you could experiment with using first finger and second finger or maybe moving your first finger from the third to the fourth string but this this seems to be a, a nice smooth way to do it you want to set up this kind of bouncing motion with your pick. I'm kind of going down and then up. So I definitely think that's the way you're going to want to pick this riff. And rhythmically this is all eighth notes but at the very top of the song we're actually coming in on an upbeat on the end of one. So it's two, three, four, one and two and three. Also really important is that we're going to give this a little bit of a swing. The rhythm isn't one and two and three and four and it's one and two and three and four and one. So you really want to try and give it that swinging kind of bounce. Then the riff continues like this. So we're kind of outlining a C chord sound here and we're leading into that with a bit of a hammer on. So from the open fifth string to the third fret. And then the shape I'm holding down is this. I've still got my first finger covering the second fret on the fourth and third strings, but I'm now playing the third fret on the fifth string. And the picking is very similar to the opening part of the riff we've got. And then on that last note, again, I'm just lifting up my first finger to allow the open third string to ring. And then we're changing chord again, this time to a, to a D chord, and I'm just holding down a partial D chord here, and I'm going... So strings four, three, four, two. And then finally to this. Is like that A chord shape but with the first finger lifted up so we've got open fifth string second fret on the fourth open third string I'll put all of that together and we've got the main riff so it's two three four one Take a look at the chorus and this is a really clever part I think. Um... This, this is the hardest part of the song for me to figure out and it took quite a lot of really close listening and watching some live footage as well and this is the part that I'd previously got a little bit wrong I think. Now we're starting off with this shape here. So uh, let me give you the actual fret numbers here. We've got the, the 11th fret on the third string, 12th fret on the second string, and then an open top string. And we're strumming that three times, those three strings. And I'm just pulling off with my third finger from the 12th fret to the open second string. And then I'm putting that finger down again. So we've got I'm using fingers two and three to do this. I think that makes sense. And I'm sliding up on the, the third string from, from the 11th fret 
up to the 16th fret and I'm, I'm landing at this shape here so it's the 16th fret on the third string 15 on the second string again the open top string just ringing away through all of this and I'm picking it like this so I've got the third string and I've got the open top string and third second first third second think you're not picking that third string again when you slide up so slide then we're coming down the neck into this idea and this is based off of a major triad shape this is an F sharp major triad we've got the 11th fret on the third and second strings and ninth fret on the top string just arpeggiating that, strings 3, 2 and 1, doing that twice. Then there's a, a little slide up from the 11th fret to the 12th fret on the second string. Then I'm playing the top two strings, so I've got the 12th fret on the second string and the open top string. Then I'm playing the third string and the second string. And then finally an open B string. And you don't necessarily need to be that precise. I think towards the end of that part it could get a little bit more strummy and you might get a couple of open strings ringing in there instead of just one. So. So let me put the chorus part together for you and I recommend just listening to the recording to get the rhythm on this. It's quite a syncopated rhythm and it's quite difficult to count out. So if you can just listen and soak up the feel, that's probably the best way to tackle this, I think. But just slowly, the actual part goes like this. We've got two, three, four. <laughs> a bit faster so we've just got one more part to go for the main guitar part and that's the part you can hear at the end of the chorus The best way to come at this is to think about this minor and minor seven chord shape. We've got a, a fifth string root bar chord here and it's a G sharp minor and if you lift up your little finger you've got a G sharp minor seven and we're starting off by just arpeggiating the lower part of the minor chord. So we're just playing the fifth string four five three, four. And then I'm lifting up the little finger and I'm playing the, the fourth, third and second strings. So I'm playing the strings four, three, four, two, two, three. And I'm actually just lifting up my second finger as well towards the end of that bar so lift the second finger second string third string and if I put all of that together so we play all of that 
twice and then we just play the first part again and we're ending with this so this is still based around this minor seventh chord shape I'm just playing the second and third strings as a double stop lifting up my second finger and I've got the second and third strings separately so it's double stop lift up the second finger two three and I'm just doing that twice so all of that together We're back down to the main riff again. Let's briefly discuss the acoustic parts then and for the most part these are really simple but what's so good about them is just the way they support the main guitar parts and the way that they support the song. So all based on fairly simple open position chord shapes. The verse of the song as I said earlier is based on A, a C and a D and essentially we've got two bars of A, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, a bar of C and then two beats of D, two beats of C and the rhythm is like this we just got one hit on the A chord, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one hit on the C chord, two, three, four and then we just got these accents on the D and the C and they're coming on beat two. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, C, two, three, four, one, two, three. And just that simple displacement of the D and the C by one beat is really effective how it fits in with the main riff. So for the chorus we have a bar of A, a bar of D, a bar of E, just playing once on each of those chords. Then we're going to G and I'm playing this G bar chord shape and we've got a little rhythmic figure on G. So So playing all of that twice and then for the the bit at the end of the chorus we've got F sharp minor, this is all relative to the capo, so I'm at the second fret here. So a minor bar chord, and then D and E. And playing all of that three times, so it's one, two, three, four, one, two. So a bar of F sharp minor, two beats each on D and E. Then we're back round for the main riff. Lastly I just want to discuss the ending of the song. We've got an amazing bunch of harmonies and overdubs you can hear at the end and it's very hard for me to hear exactly what's going on but here's my best guess and then I'm just going to try and build up those kind of textures using a looper pedal. So the first thing that I think I can hear is this kind of thing just some single notes reinforcing that main riff. So I think we've got one going like this and then we've got a higher part going like this and then maybe an even higher part going like this can hear coming in towards the very end of the song these higher more sustained parts so we've got just all on the B string and just resolving higher at the end and there's a lower harmony to that part which is Sounds to me like the harmonies are just overdubbed. Some of it could have been done with a harmonizer in the studio, I suppose. So I'm just going to try and recreate some of these sounds using the power of my looper pedal. And I've already got the main riff inside my looper, so I'm going to set that going and then overdub some of these extra bits. So 
first part. So there we are, a rough approximation of what might be happening at the end of this song. But if you've got a looper pedal, it's actually a really fun thing to try. Just put the main riff down on the first loop and then overdub some of those harmony parts and listen to how they build up. Let me talk a little bit about the gear that I'm using today. And I've actually had quite a lot of fun putting together this backing track and then the little performance you saw me do at the start of this video and trying to get close to some of the sounds that Johnny Marr gets. And I don't actually know what he would have used on the original recording and I'm guessing maybe a Rickenbacker and a Roland Jazz Chorus because that's what he sometimes used live in that period but really he could have used anything in the studio, maybe multiple guitars, maybe multiple amps. So I'm just trying to get close with the gear that I've got at my disposal and for the main electric part I decided to use my Jazzmaster which is a 65 American something or other Jazzmaster but it's a nice Jazz Master, and that was going through my Vox AC30. Little bit of delay, little bit of chorus, and a little bit of overdrive from my J Rocket Archer pedal. And it sounds to me like the main electric part is doubled. Um, it sounds like we've got one warm, slightly distorted sound, and then we've got one very clean sound. So, what I ended up doing is doubling the Jazz Master with my Telecaster, and for that I just recorded direct into the computer for that very clean DI sound. And then for the acoustics I'm using my Martin 0015M and I double tracked that as well and panned it hard left and right. That's it for this video. I'm going to be putting a detailed tab up on my Patreon page along with my backing track. So check those out if you're interested. And it's people's support on Patreon which enables me to keep on doing this. So that's always very much appreciated. Thanks very much for watching. I shall see you next week. Bye.